So in this episode, let's uh, configure our webpack. So first things first is I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it source. And I'm going to move our JavaScript folder into the source folder. And I'm going to take our HTML files and I'm going to move them into our source folder as well. So what the source folder is, is basically a directory for all of our application files. So anything relating to our application lives in the source folder. Now let's go ahead and create a new file. Let's call it webpack.config.js. Okay, so this is where all of our configuration for Webpack will be happening. So let's get started. Let's type in module exports equals new object. And in here, we want to specify a property of entry. And entry is going to contain all the inputs that we want to bundle and configure. So main thing is we want to bundle is our JavaScript files. So let's first specify a property that the name that we want to basically relate to the file that we're loading. So index. And then we want to specify the path that it, that it's in. So dot slash source JS index.js. Let's copy this. Let's say about. Give a property about as well. Okay, so cool. So we're loading two, uh, both of our files, and let's now output them somewhere. So again, this is an object, and we want to output them with a file name. So this is going to be a run for each one of these. Uh, hopefully, you will see this a little bit more clearly. And we want to put them in a JavaScript folder with name correlating to the key property here, and the file name also correlating. To the key property. Now, how do we run Webpack? Now, we, we are uh, heads up. We're going to run into some a few errors, but I just want to make sure you know what these errors are. So let's go into our package.json and let's type in, make a new script, call it build, and let's type in Webpack. All right. Let's open up our console and let's type in npm build. All right. See what happens. So we're trying to run this script. All right, sorry, npm run build. We're trying to run the build script. All right, and it should prompt you uh, that the CLI is not installed. Now let's exit this for a second and let's run npm run test. So you see how it outputs hello world here and how we're executing npm run. It's the same way it's going to put webpack into the C. Uh, what's called into the command line and it's going to try to execute a webpack command from the command a webpack command line tool so this is what it's asking us it's saying basically right you don't have the webpack command line tools here and i'm it's basically giving you a suggestion so it's actually being really smart here so again let's go npm run build let's say yes and you can see the command that it's running npm install flag D, so it's going to put it under our development uh, dependencies here. And there it is. And it actually ran Webpack as well. It actually ran the Webpack as well. So let's look into our disk folder. And here you can see JavaScript folder, uh, the about folder, and the index folder correlating to this rule we specified here. So JavaScript, name, and name. So these names correlate to the keys here. Now, what can we do about this? Uh, let's go actually into our index folder and let's do. So, right now, we don't want to be reading from this JavaScript folder. We'd rather want to be reading from this dist folder here. So, let's step out. Let's go into dist.js index and index.js. I know that we, this may seem like we're complicating things, but it will get a lot. It will, it will make sense in a bit. It's about about yes. Okay, cool. So let's try to open this. Let me just explore. 
and pop this here. Make sure this works first. Okay, so we actually, uh, because we changed our location property, let's add a dot here so we can find the view script. Okay, cool. So our application works. Now, how can we make this a little bit more intuitive to use? So let's first remove our, remove this. Okay. And cool. So now we just have our scripts here. And what we can do in our index.js and about.js, uh, we can import view from view slash dist slash view.js. Okay. And we can do the same thing in about here. Let's import it here. And let's run npm run build. First, actually, you see this warning we get here. It's basically doesn't know are we building for production? Are we building for development environment? Like, uh, what's up? So, here in our script, let's uh, make a flag. So, you want to write double dash mode and just say development. Let's save this. And now let's run npm run build. Now, you can see here the size of both our script files is around the same. And if we scroll up, you can see the size before was very, very little compared to what we have now. So almost a kilobyte versus having 367 kilobytes. So what happened here is let's double check that it still works. Okay, so everything still works. And you can see here that the file size is represented. So what happened? What Webpack did when we import view here is it basically just said, right, I'm going to put the whole view library into this about.js. So the first couple of lines that are commented out are Webpack stuff. And then comes the view uh, stuff. The whole... Uh, View package, and I think if we scroll somewhere down after view package where we have our program, if I can find it, can't see it, but basically, uh, all you need to know is that right before we declare our app here, we're gonna have the whole view library imported. Now, the main problem with this is if we go to, if you refresh this page, or actually rather if we would navigate between the two pages, the two file names will be different. And when we're gonna be serving these files, they're not gonna be cached because of different file names because they're getting served from different paths. So we're essentially gonna be re-downloading the view library when we visit a separate each page. So we wanna handle that. We wanna uh, basically uh, tell uh, Webpack, right, uh, anything, any JavaScript that's the same between the two files, put it into a separate uh, JavaScript file and uh, uh, basically make that for us. So let's go into our Webpack config and uh, let's, uh, let's do that. Let's say optimization, split chunks, big chunks, big chunks. Let's say chunks, all, and let's give it a name of vendor, pretty standard. A vendor is uh, just a sort of a common name to name your chunks, and chunk is being a shared, uh, Java, shared JavaScript function, functionality. So let's run npm run build. And now you can see what's generated. Our JavaScript files have lost basically weight and all the shared JavaScript functionality is now in our vendor right here. So it will follow the same sort of, uh, it will follow the same output structure as we specify here. Although for the vendor, we can specify a separate one 
and we can say chunk file name and we can just say right everything that's shared put it in a folder above js so just put js dot name dot js and let's not forget the comma here let's delete the dist folder actually let's not delete it let's see what happens let's do npm run build and you can see it, it hasn't deleted this vendor folder it just created a new one here and that's because it hasn't deleted it before it uh, what's it called uh, before I recreate it so if you're getting some duplication delete this and let's run npm run build and there we go fresh new one and our vendor js is here let's try to use our app and it broke <laughs> damn so what we need to do is now import our vendor js and do the same for our javascript file and here we are working again so we're back at square one but we have progressed and we're using webpack this will be it for this tutorial if you, any, if you have any questions leave them in the comments if you enjoyed the series like subscribe and as always see you in the next episode